You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by 90 Min. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeon. And on this short edition, I wanted to share some thoughts that I've been kind of having over the last sort of 24 hours with regards to Arsenal Football Club, with the regards to the direction in which Mikel Arteta appears to be taking us. I'm not here to make excuses. Um, I'm not here to do that. I'm not here to criticise either. I'm here to try and make sense of what it is that the club feel needs to be done in order to restore Arsenal back among the big boys, with the Champions League contenders, with those in the top four in the Premier League to re-establish ourselves as regular qualifiers for Europe's Premier competition. How do we go about doing that? And whether you agree with it or not, I want to try and make sense of the route that Arsenal appear to be taking. And... Um, and I guess only time will tell if it is the right route to go down. And, you know, for years, sort of for many years, I should say, Arsenal have always kind of flattered to deceive in the transfer market. You know, we've gone into summers and we've always said, you know, we're two, three players away from being the outfit that we really, really want to be. And more often than not, we end up disappointed. We don't necessarily bring in enough top quality players but what you can't say is that Arsenal haven't spent money in the transfer market because they have. You know, if you think in recent years we spent big money on Alexander Lacazette, big money on Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, big money on Thomas Partey, we've just spent £50 million on Ben White. The problem is that we've never really been able to attack a transfer window, if you like, all at once and kind of with our everything and gone and got three or four players of that ilk that could potentially turn the team around straight away. And I guess the big reason for that is finance. You know, do Arsenal have the money? Arsenal as a football club don't have the money. Do KSE, do the Cronkies? Probably. Um, and that's been a lot of people's gripes with them. You know, they haven't invested sufficiently in the club. They want to operate under this self-sustaining model, which I get. Um but it is frustrating when, as I say, every summer we get to this point in the window and it's very clear what Arsenal need to do in order to kind of elevate themselves back towards the top of the Premier League and we don't do it or we kind of half do the job. And that's what it feels like is happening again this summer. Where I take a little bit more heart from what's going on at Arsenal now than I would have done in maybe seasons gone by is that Arsenal, in my view, are very clearly taking a different approach. We've done the let's go and bring in seasoned professionals, let's go and bring in players that have been you know, performing at a decent level and then we've gone and broken the bank to bring them in. Granit Xhaka is one of them. Shkod Ramostafi is another one. Two signings that you could argue over the course of... Well, you could say, I guess, over the course of their Arsenal tenures that they've not really lived up to expectation. And that's never worked. You know, it has never seen us go on to that next level. And in the last few years, we've missed out on Champions League qualification. And Arsenal are in a more difficult place than they've ever been. They're in a more difficult place now than they were throughout Arsene Wenger's tenure, you know, throughout that 22 year stay. Prior to Arsene Wenger's arrival, Arsenal had difficult times. And this will be seen as a difficult time in the eyes of some because we got used to that success and we got used to being right at the top of the Premier League. And if we weren't in the sort of title race, we were at the very least challenging for qualification in the Premier League. And what Arsenal are trying to do here, and again, it's not an excuse and I don't know if it's going to work. We'll only know if it works when we get to the end. But it does feel like Arsenal are looking at things through a, a wider lens. They're looking at things in the long term. They're looking at things over the next three, four years, which is something that you could say the club haven't done for quite a while now. It's been very short term in terms of the transfer business that they've done. And what you've seen over the last couple of seasons, and particularly since Mikel Arteta has taken over, is you've seen an emphasis on securing the futures of bright young players. Since Edu and Arteta uh, took control, we've seen Emil Smith-Rowe, Bukayo Saka, Gabriel Martinelli, Kieran Tierney and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, who at the time you'd have all wanted to see sign a new contract, all commit their futures to the football club. And that is a positive. So 
you would say that they're our most talented players. And so the fact that they seemingly have faith in Mikel Arteta and the project that he's embarking on has to be taken as a positive. I mean, they're the ones that work with him every single day on the training ground that understand much better than we do what his game plan is, what his philosophy is, what's the type of football that he wants to see Arsenal playing. I'm not saying 100% that he's the right man for the job because we don't know that. You know, that's that's the reality. We don't know if Mikel Arteta is going to be a success eventually or if he's going to crash and burn this season and be out on his ass. That remains to be seen. But what you can say is that Arsenal clearly are working towards the longer term. And when you consider that we can't go and spend the kind of money that Chelsea can, that Manchester City can, that Manchester United can in the transfer market, you kind of arrive at the point where for any logical fan, this is the way to do it. It's about building. We've talked a lot about rebuilds. And, you know, if we're in the same boat, 12, 18, 24 months down the line, then we can look back and say, well, Arsenal took the wrong approach here. But spending money doesn't always guarantee success. And I actually think Arsenal have spent money in recent years to shut people up. And that money's been spent badly. But it's given Arsenal as a football club something to turn back on the fans and say, well, hold on a minute, we did invest. So you can't say we don't spend money. I don't care about spending money. I don't care if Arsenal buy a player for £5 million or if Arsenal buy a player for £100 million. If he's the right man for the role that he's being brought in to do, then that's OK with me. And that's all I'm interested in. And I think what Arsenal are trying to do now is they're trying to build this core for the future. And that core includes Ben White, who's just come in for £50 million. Gabriel, who's come in uh, at the start of last season. Uh, you know, is, is someone that Arsenal see as a long-term fixture. You've got Kieran Tierney just committed, as I said, his long-term future to the club. You move into the midfield and you look at players like Sambi Lakonga, someone that Arsenal see as a player for the future. Thomas Partey is one of those stars and a player who is here for the here and now and one that is expected to help the, the younger core develop and kind of help them with his experience and enhance their game. And then you move further forward and you've got Emil Smith-Rowe and you've got Bukayo Saka and you've got Nicola Pepe who's starting to come good and you've got Gabriel Martinelli following Balogun. So what Arsenal are doing, you can see it. You can see what they're at least trying to achieve in the way they're going about things during this window. And what I want to see is I want to see smart investment. And yes, people will say that £50 million on Ben White is too much money. But I think you'll only see Arsenal spend that kind of money on players that they really, truly believe are for the long term, are for the future. And somebody like Ben White fits into that category. So does somebody like Sambi Lakonga, spent nearly £20 million bringing him in. What I don't think you're going to see anymore is Arsenal spending 35, 40 million pound on 27, 28 year olds. And that's clear. You can see it by the profile of player that we're being linked with this summer. You can see it by the profile of the players that we're said to have entered talks with. And because of that, I do feel like even if it is going to take us that little bit longer to get to where we need to be, and it is going to bring some short term pain, Arsenal have settled on that strategy. I don't think Mikel Arteta is a man under pressure. I think as fans, we're going to put him under a hell of a lot of pressure when the new season starts. If Arsenal do not hit their goals, if Arsenal do not start uh, to show some promise and some improvement on what we saw last season. But in my opinion, in the club's eyes, Mikel Arteta is safe. Mikel Arteta is not going anywhere. He is somebody that Arsenal Football Club have entrusted with building this new age Arsenal, this new squad, this new group. And I think the club, rightly or wrongly, and I'm not even saying it's the right approach. Don't start on me in the comments because I'm not saying that this is definitely the right approach. What I am saying is I think that there has been a reset at the club. I think there has been an acceptance, a realisation of the fact that we cannot compete with some of our peers in terms of the transfer market. And Chelsea being linked with... Uh, Erling Haaland, £150 million. That's a, an entire transfer window for Arsenal, let alone one player. You know, Manchester United, big money on Jadon Sancho. Rafael Varane, another big money deal that perhaps on the face of it doesn't look so big, but when you 
deep dive into it and look at what he's going to be taking away in terms of a salary from the club, that is also a huge, huge investment, the kind of which Arsenal simply cannot make. So you do come to a place where actually doing this and building for the future probably feels like the sensible approach. The issue is that as fans, we want success now. We want to see Arsenal competitive now. And we want to see a certain level, a certain standard maintained. And I, as much as anyone, have been incredibly frustrated by our league performances in recent years. I found them incredibly underwhelming. I thought that last season, at least the top six finish was was doable. And, you know, we gave Mikel Arteta some leeway this season before because he took over halfway through because he won the FA Cup. But there was no clear improvement in terms of how we, where we finished there were some subtle improvements the defensive record was better I thought Arsenal were more competitive in some of the games against uh, some of the big six and there were a couple of other bits and pieces too but overall you want that to translate in terms of the league position and when you're at a football club like Arsenal people don't have the patience to wait for this rebuild to be complete so it's all good setting out to rebuild a squad and to look at two, three seasons down the line. But in getting to where it is you want to go, in getting to your final destination, actually, you have to show signs of progress and you have to maintain a certain level. And Arsenal, unfortunately, under Mikel Arteta so far, haven't done that. It's not, again, it's not an excuse because there is no excuse. You know, Arsenal not being competitive, not even being in Europe is embarrassing. You know, it's not good enough for a club of our stature. Arsenal pre Arsene Wenger had some pretty poor seasons you know but once Arsene Wenger came in there was a standard set at Arsenal and that standard was maintained for most of his career yes the standard dropped a little bit gradually it went from being title contenders to being Champions League qualifiers and eventually he missed out on the Champions League and that was when people thought it was time to go he had one season in the Europa League and that was that Um, But that standard has progressively dropped and dipped. And that's why people are upset, frustrated and disappointed. But I think what you've got to do as Arsenal fans at times is, I'm not saying don't be angry. I'm not saying don't be disappointed. I'm not saying don't even be frustrated. But I think some of the anger, frustration and disappointment is being misplaced at times. You know, we talked on the podcast earlier today about Granit Xhaka. And we talked about how people say that he's not good enough and that he's, he shouldn't be an important part of this team. But that's not on Granit Xhaka. You shouldn't be digging him out. You should be digging out the club for not going and bringing that better player in. When Mikel Arteta took the job, I'm sure he was told or it was discussed about how Arsenal would proceed and what the strategy would be. And the strategy clearly is a longer term one. It clearly is about bringing in players of a certain age profile and coaching and getting the best out of what you've got over a period of time so that we do eventually get back to to where we need to be, but also have a very good group that have been together for a couple of seasons that have incredible sell on value. That's a big asset to the club. We don't care about that as fans. But the clubs certainly do. And I think there is a strategy and there is a clear direction. But are we doing enough in the meantime whilst striving to achieve that goal? Are we meeting that minimum standard that all big football clubs have? And the answer on that has to be no. And that's where the frustration comes from. But if Mikel Arteta and the club have agreed that this is the way to go, then as I said a little bit earlier on, there is no pressure on the Spaniard. There is no need to you know to worry about his position and then as a result of that refer revert sorry back to short-termism and looking at the short term you know I think that Mikel Arteta is banking on his ability as a coach more than he's banking on Stan Kroenke's checkbook and that may prove to be wrong that may prove not to be enough and we may well see Mikel Arteta sacked during this upcoming season I wouldn't be surprised. But for the time being, Arsenal have embarked on a project. Arsenal are working towards a particular goal. And that goal means the likes of Smith Rowe, Saka, Martinelli, uh, Balogun, who's just signed a new deal, Ben White, Gabriel, Kieran Tierney, all being a huge part of this club's fo- uh, future and all playing key, key roles. So, as I said at the top of the, the, the episode, I'm not here 
to make excuses. I'm not here to even make the case that this is the right route to go down. But I think it's very clear that that is the route that Arsenal are looking to go down right now. And along the way, where finances allow, I think they will try and complement that group by bringing in a couple of players. We've seen uh, Ben White come in. As I say, he's one for the longer term. I think there is a need between now and the end of the window to get a couple more experienced and, or, or maybe... They don't necessarily have to be older, but players who have maybe been there a little bit more, been around the block a little bit, and uh, in order to complement this project and in order to enhance it and help it along the way. But that's how I feel Arsenal are approaching things at the moment. That's the direction of travel I feel Arsenal are heading in at the moment. And I think it's obvious. I think it's obvious to see that. The question is, will you as a supporter, will I as a supporter, be willing to to give them that time and that leeway that is no doubt needed in order for Arsenal to get there. If we get to the end of the project, you know, if we get a little bit further down the line and we're seeing very little sign of improvement and no significant progress made, then I think we can all probably turn around and say it was the wrong route to go down. It was it's a route that is great in in to the idealist, you know, it's the ideal route bring players through nurture them sign young talents develop them and produce this amazing team that can compete with everybody but we've seen in modern football that that's very rarely the case now Arsenal have opted to go down that route Arsenal are going to try and go down that route and as I said already only time will tell if it's going to be successful if you disagree with the direction in which Arsenal are going in and I'm on the fence about it right now I've got to say because of my worries going into the new season and, and I guess my prediction going into the new season at this moment in time, given the squad that we currently have. But surely, even if you disagree with it, you can see that that is the plan and that is the idea. So are we not, as supporters, obligated to support that idea for now at least and to give it the opportunity? Because I tell you what, if a year down the line, Arsenal are a very competitive outfit made up largely of homegrown, exciting young talent that have all come through together will be the envy of fans all over the world. So it is one of those things where the reward could be incredible. You know, the, the risk though is probably a little bit too much for Mikel Arteta to be stretching to at this moment and given how things went last season. But as I say, only time will tell whether this was the right option or not. But that's what I think is going on at Arsenal. It's what I believe the club and Mikel Arteta have set out to do. Now it's over to them to achieve it. Don't forget this podcast is brought to you by manscaped.com. So for all your male grooming needs, head over to manscaped.com, enter our discount code, which is 90min20, and uh, you shall receive 20% off of your order as well as free shipping. Make sure you leave a like on the video if you're watching us via YouTube. If you're listening on the audio platforms, then please do leave us a review. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And if you fancy becoming a member, well, click on the link in the description for more information. We'll be back very, very soon with some more Arsenal-related content. Until then, take care.